going on at a distance. It isn't taking place where he is. As you know all too well, De La Vlenda, a man lives inside his head. That's where the seat of his soul is. James and I were both present recently when a man was deprived of his eyes. And the most astonishing thing happened. Didn't you notice? He wasn't there anymore. He'd gone, even though he was still alive. So in this brief moment between life and death, there was nobody inside his skull. Most odd. So James, I'm going to penetrate to where you are, to the inside of your head. Uh, the first probe will play with your sight, your hearing, and your balance, just with the subtlest of manipulations. We'll get on with it then. Nothing can be as painful as listening to you talk. All right. Let's begin. You probably know that James here lost his parents when he was young. But did you know that it was my father who helped him through this difficult time? Over the course of two winters, he taught him to ski, and climb, and hunt. He soothed the wounds of the poor little blue-eyed orphan. Asked me to treat him as a brother. My little brother. They formed quite an attachment. So, you killed him? Yes, I did. You know what happens when a Cuckoo hatches inside another bird's nest. Yes. He forces the other eggs out. Yes. Well, this cuckoo made me realize my father's life had to end. In a way, he's responsible for the path I took. So thank you, cuckoo. <laughs> Do you know any other bird calls, Franz? <laughs> Hello, pussy. Franz Oberhauser died 20 years ago, James, in an avalanche alongside his father. The man you're talking to now, the man inside your head, is Ernst Stafford Blofeld. Can't you name? My mother's bloodline. If the needle finds the correct spot in the fusiform gyrus, you recognize no one. Of course, the faces of your women are interchangeable, aren't they, James? You won't know who she is. Just another passing face on your way to the grave. He dies not knowing who you are. The daughter of an assassin. The only one who could have understood him. Shame. 